Zambians are being taken for a ride and we need to bring a stop to this kind of behavior. And it appears that Zambians are now used to being treated to rhetoric. It appears we Zambians have accepted and we are used to being treated to rhetoric and lies. You cannot have the first citizen of this country always channeling out lies to the people of Zambia and you take it that this is normal. My dear brother, President Hagainde Ichilema, you can do better. Look, my brother, lies have got very short legs. And the Bible says, we shall know the truth and only the truth will set us free. It is not right that every time we address the people of Zambia, we are feeding them with lies. I don't want to describe, uh, use Bemba descriptions of a person who tells lies because here we are dealing with a Republican president who deserve to be respected. If it was an opposition leader, I could have used the appropriate Bemba description of a person who tells lies. But because I don't want to sound disrespectful to the president, I just want to offer him advice and say that this idea of telling lies with your straight face must come to an end. And I don't think Zambians deserve rhetoric. Zambians deserve better. You see, our expressions when we are in the opposition should not be the expressions when you are in government, particularly when you are the head of state. Particularly when you are the head of state, you must provide leadership and quality leadership. And everything that you say must be nothing but the truth. Because when citizens start challenging the president with facts, I mean, would be accused of denting the image of our own country. But I think when things have gone out of hand with so many lies, so many deceits, it is only reasonable that we talk about them so that we bring an end to this kind of behavior. Yesterday, Zambians were treated to nothing but rhetoric and a cluster of lies which I am going to, to challenge in my discourse. The president yesterday was expected to give us a way forward on now we are going to end the high cost of living, the high cost of fuel, high cost of electricity, etc. But what did our president do? Our president merely grossed over these issues by giving us a cluster of lies. For instance, the president said that uh, the cost, high cost of living is as, as a result of the economic uh, GDP growth being in the negative. He also said that uh, the inflation was too high and that there was poor leadership and poor management of our resources. This is not true. It is not true in that, look, today the president himself said that the country is recording a GDP growth of about 2%. 
and that the inflation is now about a single digit from 24 uh, 24 to about 7 8 percent now if the dg the, the, the G, gdp growth has picked up the inflation has dropped from 24 percent to about seven eight percent why is it that the cost of living today is much more higher than it was under pf why is it that the cost of living today the cost of fuel today the cost of electricity today is much much higher than it was on the 12th of august 2021 because everybody knows that the cost of living has actually gone up in the last one year more than it was under pf so if it is true that the cost of living is as a result of the economy being in the negative or in recess and that it's because of inflation and poor management why is it that now we have good management a good president excellent one as he puts it himself and that we have recorded growth of two percent as opposed to the to the negative of we were about negative two point five percent but the price of commodities have gone up much higher than they were under pf who had recorded a negative gdp growth and whose inflation was 24 percent so you can see that this is nothing but lies prior to the elections i didn't indicate to the nation what was causing high price of commodities and president Hagainde Ichilemawai in opposition says no it was just poor management and that when he forms government and he becomes president he was going to reduce the cost of living and about three four things he pointed out that he was going to to reduce he said he was going to reduce the cost of millimeter to about 50 kwach, the 25 kg bag of millimeter. He also said that he was going to reduce fertilizer from 600 kwach. That was the, the common market price of about 600, 700 kwach per bag to about 250 kwach per bag. Today, the price of millimeter is about two, uh, uh, 180 kwacha per 25 kg bag. Today, the price of fertilizer is over 1,000 kwacha, common uh, market price. And for FISIP, it has moved from 1,000 kwacha per, 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 per 50 kg bag to 1,400 and in some instances 1,200 so you can see that our president was not telling the truth and above not telling the truth he went on to he failed to give us policy direction of how he was going to reduce the cost of living Because if indeed the cost of living was high because of microeconomic indicators like two, uh, negative 2.5% uh, growth against is positive 2% growth, inflation at 7% against PF 24%, then the price of commodities could have come down under his leadership. But because 
this is not the cause of high prices of commodity. The president was telling lies. And unfortunately, I have to be blunt, blunt about it, that the president was actually not telling the truth. Let's come to Lord Shedding. The president was telling us that there is no Lord Shedding. Even asking people in the audience, is there anybody who has been Lord Shedded? And he went on to say there is nobody who has been Lord Shedded since the announcement of Lord Shedding. Mr. President, if your people are not telling you the truth, they will make you earn a very bad name among the Zambians. Here in Wansha where I am, I've been Lord Shaded twice. I've been Lord Shaded twice. And I know a lot of people and areas in Lusaka, Copper Bell, Ndola, Kitwe, who have been Lord Shaded. I was in Kasama recently, and there was Lord Shading in Kasama. So where are you getting? This, you know, these facts. Or where are you getting your briefings that there is no Lord Shedding in this country? My dear colleagues who are handling the president, can we learn to tell the truth? Look, when you are telling lies, you are actually telling the people who are experiencing it. Today, when you traverse Zambia, people are complaining. Now they are saying, does the president live in Zambia or not? Is the president on top of things or not? If he can tell us that there is no Lord Shedding. This issue of Lord Shedding, my dear brother, President Hagainde Hichilema, I advised. But I think it seems that this government is arrogant. The minister indicated that we are not going to terminate contracts of those we are exporting electricity to. And this was reaffirmed by the president yesterday that we cannot terminate contracts abruptly because we are going to work on increasing power generation capacity. And if we cancel the contracts, then it would mean that when we have excess, we'll have nowhere to, to, to export. What a way of thinking. What a way of thinking, Mr. President. You are a smart person, but I think on this one, however, President, no, let's be serious. How can you continue giving electricity to other countries when your own small-scale entrepreneurs are suffering six hours of load shedding? How can you continue exporting because you are looking in the future that should you have excess electricity you will not have anybody to buy that electricity because of cancelling current contracts when you have a problem on your hands in your own country but president you can do better and my advice to you can you enforce the force majeure i have said it, the force majeure is simply a provision in a contract that if you are supplying some something to somebody let's take for instance electricity and i know i have seen the zesco uh, uh, export contracts there's a provision in force majeure and the pf did enforce the force majeure when we had terrible load shedding it simply means that when you are faced with an act of God or unforeseen circumstances and you are not able to meet 
your contractual obligations, you can enforce this provision. Now, Mr. President, if you can make your own <laughs> small-scale entrepreneurs, barbershop owners, saloon owners, those welders in Kalingalinga, you are promoting the uh, manufacturing of desks in the country and you have put given yourself a target that by end 2023 the desks must be in the schools now if those people who are fabricating the desks don't have electricity how are they going to be productive then you say no we cannot cancel export contracts because in future when you have a, a, Excess will not have where to sell it to our president, please. <laughs> Give us a break. Is this what Zambians voted you for? To prioritize business than prioritize social aspects of our economy. And I've even said, look, don't run the, this country on purely business principles. Because governance is not a totally business. It's a business to some extent. But the major component of governance is to provide enabling environment for your citizens to have a comfortable life. For your citizen to have businesses that will thrive. Now, sure, if you prioritize selling electricity to foreigners because you don't want to lose those customers. But you would rather your own people suffer income by shutting down their barbershop for six hours, shutting down their uh, uh, fabrication workshops for six hours. Even to some extent, industries keep people away. If a manufacturing <clears throat> industry will go without six hours of electricity. Obviously, on that particular day, they'll tell the people to stay away from work. Productivity is re reducing. So to come and give us rhetoric that we have to keep our customers in case in future we have... No, 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 no. So the president told us lies that... There was no Lord shedding when there is Lord shedding. Let's